By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Tippy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome to the Raging Bull series because it is Tuesday again and every Tuesday we bring you magic from the Raging Bull series tournament, this online event from the Netherlands. And today we're looking at Reindeer aka Christian who is taking on David and Christian is playing with a uh, troll disco deck. And uh, David, his opponent, is playing with a mono black zombie deck. So I guess both of these uh, decks play with creatures. They just don't want to die. So this could be a really interesting match. And this match is played in the group stages still of the Raging Bull series. Now, if you'd like to know more about this tournament, simply check the description below. There you will find a link to the website of the Raging Bull series. And you can find all the details. And maybe you would like to join us next year for this event. So... Check out the Raging Bull series website. Link is in the description below. And uh, what else you can find in the description below are timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So if you want to skip the deck deck that we're about to start, you can click on that timestamp that reads MTG Games and you can just go directly to the action. Um, as for here, we are going to continue with the deck deck. And I think, yeah, I'm going to start with the deck of Christian. So the deck of Reindeer. Uh, and that's going to be Troll Disco. So let's take a look at his pile of cards. And here we see the deck of Reindeer. So I've called it Disco Troll for obvious reasons, right? There are four Nevernerals Discs in here and three Setch Trolls. And that synergy is kind of well known, right? Nevernerals Discs, 40 cast comes into play tapped. When you untap it, you can pay one and you can destroy everything, right? Everything gets destroyed except for the lands. And of course, Setch Troll has regeneration, so you can regenerate your Setch Troll. Your Setch Troll lives after the explosion, and you can attack with it. Some other nice synergy uh, with the Nevenerals disc, by the way, or the four Mishra's Factories that are also in this deck. Uh, Mishra's Factory, of course, being a land, so you blow everything up. And after that, you animate your Mishra's Factories, and you've got two, two creatures, and you can attack your opponent, and you know, you can deal some damage. So Mishra's Factory and Setch Troll go together very well with Nevenerals disc. And um, when you look at this deck, you may notice, hey, there is so much blue. And you're probably not used to that when you think of Troll Disco. And neither am I, to be honest. But when we look at the blue, it kind of makes sense. I think what Reindeer has done, he has made his Disco Troll deck even more controlled than it is. Nevernerals Disc itself is already a control card. But by adding a lot of blue, you add more control. We see three counter spells, And I think that Altar underneath uh, that third counter spell is a Mana Drain, probably. So we see Mana Drain. We see Blue Power. You know, that all gives you control as well. Just taking an extra turn with the Time Walk. Um, the Time Twister is great in this deck because it's going to shuffle those Lightning Bolts back in. It's going to shuffle those Psy Blasts back in. So you've got your Direct Damage again. So overall, you know, um, there is a little bit more control in this deck as you're probably used to in a Troll Disco deck. And we also see only three black cards, the two usual suspects, I would say, Mind Twist and Demonic Tutor. There are some beautiful altars in this deck. So maybe you're looking at, where's the Mind Twist? Where's the Mind Twist? Well, that's an altered card. I wish I, wish I had a better photo of Reindeer's deck because I think these altars are just stunning. Look at that Fireball. Uh, look at that Ancestral Recall. Look at that Library of Alexandria. There are just a lot of beautiful, beautiful altars in this deck. Uh, I know that Reindeer has a great collection of cards. What's interesting when I'm looking at the black cards, by the way, is we see Demonic Tutor Mind Twist. That's very obvious, right? That's not interesting. That's very obvious. But that card in the middle, the Sangir Vampire. So Reindeer, if you're listening to this, can you let us know where did this choice come from to put a single Sangir Vampire in your deck? Um, and then talking about the creatures, maybe another choice that you may think is uh, unexpected or the playset of Surrender Pafrits. Now, Surrender Pafrit, one of the best cards in old school, one of the best creatures, I should say, in old school. So it's not a surprise to find it in this deck. It's one blue and two for a three, four flyer. That's incredible stats. It does deal one damage during your upkeep, right? And you're probably thinking, what is the synergy between Surrender Pafrit and an Avenor's Disc? I think there is no direct connection. I mean, when Surrender Pafrit goes to the graveyard, there's no, you know, you don't get a get a trigger there's there's no benefit it doesn't have regeneration but what it does have is it's cheap to cast it's a body on the battlefield that your opponent has to deal with you can put early pressure on and let's say your opponent finds a way to deal with it then you can play a disc pop the disc you know and start all over again it's also a great card to that allows you to do two things at the same time because it's relatively cheap for such a big creature right so that means that you can cast a creature of a considerable size 
and do something else in the same turn. I think that's one of the reasons that Surrender by Freed is, uh, is so loved in old school. It's just so cheap to cast, and that means you can do more things than just cast a creature in your turn, uh, which is great. So again, with the Nevenerals disc, I can see those two cards kind of working together, even though there's not a direct synergy. Um, something else I'd like to point out with, uh, point out here is the mana base of Reindeer. When you look at the mana base, you hardly see any basic lands. So maybe you're thinking, this is very vulnerable to a Blood Moon. Well, actually it is not because a Blood Moon will turn all his non-basics into mountains, right? Which is, which is not great, but he's also got a lot of red mana. Uh, I mean, sorry, red spells. So he can still cast his red spells, but he can also still cast his artifact spells. And he's got four Nevenerals discs. So all he needs to find is one of those four Nevenerals discs, pop the disc, and that destroys the Blood Moon, and he has access to all his mana again. So, you know, you may think at first glance, ooh, that's a risky mana base in a format that has Blood Moon. But when you look at those four Nevenerals discs, you know, forget about it. Besides that, he's also playing with the Moxen, he's playing with the Black Lotus. So he's got, he's got so many ways of getting the right colors and he's got so many ways of destroying the the blood moon well actually he's got four ways and they're all four the same they're four nevenerals discs right but that's enough that's really going to help him so uh, this is the deck of reindeer and now we're going to look at the deck of his opponent david and he's playing with a mono black zombie deck so that sounds interesting right let's take a look and here we see the deck of David. So as you can see, it's mono black and it's zombies, right? This deck breathes zombies. We see so many zombies. And just to clarify, Cyclopean Mummy uh, is now a zombie. That's a new updated creature type. The same thing goes for Walking Dead. It's also a zombie. Cabal Ghoul, it's also a zombie. And Headless Horseman, kind of the scave zombies, right, of Legends is also a zombie. So the Zombie Master works for all of these. So we see two, four seven, ten zombies, and four zombie masters. Um, that's actually also a zombie. So we see in total, um, we see 14 zombies, right? Am I correct with that? Let me check, six, ten, yeah, 14 zombies in this deck. So that's quite a lot. And of course, we see three anime deaths, so the zombies can return. And interesting in this deck, what else do we see? We also see Nevenerals discs. And what did we see in the deck? Of his opponent today also Nevenerals discs so both of these players seem to really love you know the Nevenerals disc and uh, what I find interesting here is usually w what I do with zombie master because um, uh, because it gives your zombies swamp walk I play with evil presence or I play with uh, with other ways to give my opponent swamps uh, but we don't see that in this deck and in a way it makes sense because the problem is when you play with cards like Evil Presence, um, it's an enchantment, right? So if you then use your Nevenerals Disc and you blow everything up, you also blow up your own uh, enchant land. So that's not going to work. So in a way, it makes sense that he's not playing with it. On the other hand, I mean, the Zombie Master, the problem with it, of course, is that it doesn't give your zombies plus one, plus one. That's, the, that's why it's the weakest of all the lords, right? You've got Goblin King, you've got Lord of Atlantis, and you've got the Zombie Master. Those three are the originals, the OG from Alpha, right? The problem of the Zombie Master is it's the only one that doesn't give plus one, plus one. What does it give? Instead, it gives regeneration. And usually, a lot of these zombies, like Walking Dead in this deck, already have regeneration. That being said, the majority of these zombies don't have that. So, of course, regeneration works really good with the Nevenerals disc, right? You give everything regeneration, then you use your Nevenerals disc, you regenerate your entire undead army, and your opponent has no creatures, and you have tons of creatures left. You know, that's kind of the idea, isn't it? And then when you get your zombie through at the right time, we see two beautiful uh, Howl from Beyond. So I'm really happy to see that in your deck, David. I think it's such a cool card. So we see those Howl from Beyonds to kind of give that blow out of nowhere and just like in reindeer's deck we also here see the mistress factories probably because they work so well with that nevenerals disc right you blow everything up but not the lands so your um your mistress factories they live and you can turn them into an assembly worker and you can attack right that's pretty obvious uh synergy here i think those two terrors by the way main board are going to be very useful against those annoying such trolls remember with terror your opponent cannot regenerate. So they're ideal to play on Satch Trolls. Of course, they are really bad against artifact creatures and black creatures. But lo and behold, against Reindeer David, you're lucky. He's not playing with any of those. Well, actually, he's playing with one Sengir Vampire. So hopefully, you're, you won't be in a scenario where you just have your Terror 
and Sengir on the other side of the board. Let's let's hope that for you. But the, the chances are slim that that's going to happen because he's only playing with a one-off. Um, another card I'd like to take out, looking at the zombies, is a Cabal uh, Ghoul, which I think is a very cool card. It's one black and two to cast for a 1-1. One, one. It's a creature from Arabian Nights. And it reads, at the end of each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on the ghoul for each other creature that died during the turn and was not regenerated. So the cool thing about the ghoul is, and this is a little trick, that you can do is you can pop your disc destroy everything and after that you can play out the ghoul and what happens is the ghoul uh, gets a plus one plus one counter at the end of the turn uh, of for every creature that died that turn so the ghoul doesn't have to be in play at the moment that the creature dies uh, died the creatures die right so you can have a scenario where you pop the disc you destroy like four creatures then you play the ghoul and then at the end of the turn your ghoul will get four plus one plus one counters how cool is that so i'm hoping david that you get to pull that off when i'm looking at your list i have to be honest i think reindeer is a strong favorite here but you never know it's magic you know so uh let's go to the games and let's see how this is going to turn out reindeer versus david Game number one, David, the mono black player, taking a mulligan, it seems, the player on the bottom and at the top we see Reindeer who's on the play here, starting with a Mox Ruby and a Mishra's Factory, also a Mishra's Factory by David Pasturn. Let's see what Reindeer is going to do, probably going to swing in here, he's got nothing to fear, so he can just swing in for two, 18 for David, and as you can see there's also a clock with these matches because it is tournament magic and then you've got 50 minutes, 5-0, to play your games. And there we see a Walking Dead, the OG from Legends, a 1-1, one, one, and for one black you can regenerate it. And Christian playing another island, and a Soul Ring. Look at the amount of mana he already has. That's kind of sick, isn't it? Tapping the Soul Ring, two floating, putting one for his uh, factory, making it into an assembly worker, and playing a Time Walk. What a start here for Reindeer, taking control of this game very early on. David dropping to 16, doesn't want to block with his Walking Dead, again taking two with the extra turn of Reindeer, gonna go to 14, and there we see a Nevenerals Disc. I don't think David really minds his Nevenerals Disc. The question is if Reindeer is actually gonna pop it, why would he at this point? But look at the amount of mana that Reindeer has if you compare that to David. It's just in insane, you know, and that time walk, that was just crazy. I wonder what he's gonna do now. Tapping three for a Zombie Master, that's an interesting choice, two, three creature, and it gives his zombie regeneration, which it already has, and Swamp Walk, which could be relevant later in the game. I wonder if Reindeer is going to pop the disc now, because David is tapped out, so he cannot regenerate the Walking Dead. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like he's going to pop the disc, and he's going to keep the mana floating. Using that mana to cast a Set Troll, probably, and a Mox Jet, is he also going to, yes, going to animate the factory into an assembly worker, and Dave is going to drop down to 12. I mean, things are just looking bad for David. I mean, Reindeer is so controlling this game from the get-go. And of course, that mulligan by David didn't help. Tapping three, are we going to see another Zombie Master? No, this is the Hatless Horseman. Beautiful art, beautiful flavor, but it is in the end a 2-2 vanilla. Interesting here is that the Set Troll is a 2-2, by the way, because there is no uh, Swamp here. He's attacking, blocking by David, and he's regenerating the Setch because he has that Mox Jet, so it's not going to die. And what else is he going to do? Playing another Satchtroll and a Mox Sapphire. Re Reindeer's hand is empty. I guess that's the only thing that David can kind of hang on to, that he's got more cards in hand, but they need to be good cards. Okay, this is something sinkholing the Mishra's Factory that's actually done quite a lot of damage. And there we see an attack for four. And taking damage, he's animating the Factory, blocking one, making it a 3-3. Three, three. So only taking two damage, going down to 10 playing another Swamp, and playing a Cabal Ghoul, so the 1-1 one, one from Arabian Nights, and it gets plus one, plus one at the end of the turn for each creature died. Ooh, a Badlands, that's bad news for David. That means the set trolls have become three, three creatures swinging for six in total. The question now is, is he gonna block, and if so, with what? So he's gonna block with the Cabal Ghoul, taking three damage, dropping to seven, Things are looking really bad for David here in game number one. He needs a little miracle to get back from this. And also Nevenerals Disc is not going to help him because of those set trolls. They've got regeneration. 
so they don't really mind an Evneral's disc activation. Let's see what David can do. What he needs first is a terror just to get rid of one of them, preferably both of the terrors. Okay, this is something. He's playing a demonic tutor, and now I'm thinking in my head, what can he actually look up? I think I think a terror is still his best option. The problem, of course, is that a terror is only, you know, one card, it only destroys one of those creatures. A sinkhole could be interesting as well, because then he can use it to destroy the Batlands, and that would mean that both set trolls turn back into two twos, and now they're three three. So that could be an option. And maybe I'm maybe I'm missing something. Obviously, a mind twist is useless because Reindeer only has one in hand and you know, David's behind on board as well, so he's got to change the current board state. Tap into her, okay, there we see a terror. That's closed really nicely with his playmat. Oh, brutal! Counterspell by Reindeer. Oh, man. That means he's going to drop to one life, and he's not changing the life total there, but he's on one. So I think this is game for David. What can he do, really? Playing a Nevenerals disc that's too little, too late. Gun attack, that's it. Game number one goes to Reindeer, and what a quick game it was. We're going to let these players sideboard, and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. David on the play, starting with a basic swamp passing turn here. Ooh, that is the Library of Alexandra. It's an altered one. Beautiful altar, by the way. Oh, and a sinkhole. Good for you, David. I'm actually happy that this happens because, you know, you don't want to create this non-game with the library there. And there we see an underground sea, of course. Beautiful card and a discard because of, of course, an extra card he took from his own library. So discarding that volcanic island and tapping three for a zombie master, two, three. Zombie master gives all other zombies regeneration for one black and swamp walk, which is relevant with the two underground seas on the battlefield. Let's hope that he can find some swamps attacking for four here. Going for the aggressive plan, Reindeer going down to 16, playing another Swamp. Can he find like a Walking Dead, for example? That would have been nice. Or a Mummy. Cannot find it. Ooh, again, that blue power from Reindeer that helped him so much in game one. And he can just take an extra turn for two. That's just insane value playing a Volcanic Island. Is this going to bring him back in the game playing a Chaos Orb and passing turn? Wonder if he's going to flip the orb on the zombie master maybe later. Attacking here and he's keeping his mana open. So does that mean he's got, for example, a Gabal Ghoul? Ooh, there's a Library of Alexandria of his own. I don't think he's got a lot of cards in hand anymore, though. There we see the um, Hatless Horseman. 2-2 two, two now. It's got Swamp Walk and it has Regeneration. He's playing a Counterspell. Look at Reindeer there playing a Counterspell to counter a Hatless Horseman. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, but I, I do think it makes sense. Ooh, there's that altered mind twist. Even though it's altered, it's still yuck. Oh, look at that. I'm feeling bad for David. I'm kind of rooting for David here. I, I hope you don't mind Reindeer, but he's really the underdog in this matchup. And uh, I'm just hoping that he can win it. Attacking for four, and they're playing a mummy, the 2-1 mummy. Remember, it's got Swamp Walk and Regeneration because of that Zombie Master. And I'm actually expecting maybe Christian to to use his Chaos Orb by now, because he's getting pretty low on life. Playing a Setch Troll, it kind of makes sense now to, to flip on the Zombie Master. Yeah, that's what he's going to do, probably. So he's going to flip. Let's see if he hits. If he doesn't, yeah, he hits. Okay. I won't say if he doesn't, he's in big trouble, but he does hit. There's an untap by David. This is tough, right? You don't want to attack because that Setch Troll can kill both of your creatures, but at the same time, you want to keep pressure on Reindeer, there we see a sinkhole. Sorry, a strip mine, I mean. He can, of course, use the strip mine to take care of the Mishra's factory, choosing to play a Nevenerals disc. The Nevenerals disc is going to be quite successful in destroying the uh, the mummy if he wants to. But why would he? Attacking here for three. Dave probably going to take the damage. Going to go to 17. Hasn't taken any damage yet. And then maybe next turn he can attack. And I wonder if Reindeer in response is going to use... His, ooh, that is interesting. That is interesting. Playing the Zombie Master. In response, he's going to pop the disc. So that the mummy goes, the Cyclopean mummy. And, ooh, look at that. Also stripping away the Mishra's factory. So Christian really just responding to that. Ooh, Sengir Vampire. The single Sengir in his deck. Bad news for David because it flies over the Zombie Master. 
And what, what David needs now is just another zombie master because they can give each other Swamp Walk or just another zombie. Okay, this is something. Yes, this is good. Animate that on his zombie master. Will we see a counter spell? No response from, from Reindeer. Look at that. He's only got one land untapped. Attacking here. Dealing two damage. Look at the life total of Reindeer going down to eight. David at 14 at the moment. Attacking here for seven. Blocking with one and regenerating. So he's taking four damage. He's going down to 10. There we see a Nevenerals disc. Ooh, that's going to be interesting because the disc actually destroys the anime debt. So then David does lose one of his creatures. I wonder what he's going to do. Attacking with both. Reindeer's going to go down to five. He's in the red zone. Wow. Can David make this? If he would have had that howl from beyond still. There we see a terror on the Satch Troll. Attacking for fours. Going down to six. Another Satch Troll. Wow, and that means that, that, that David next turn will have to keep one of his Zombie Masters untapped because he needs to block the Setch Troll because he's too low in life. He cannot take 7 damage anymore. Reindeer looking at his 1 card and passing turn untapped from David. I'm liking this game number 2. Another Swamp attacking him for 2. Reindeer going down to 3. Ooh, he's so close yet so far away. He's on two. Oh, lightning bolt. Ah, oh, look at that. He was about to draw into his drain life, and that would have given him the game. Ah, David, man. David, I feel for you. I feel for you. But Reindeer has the better deck. We have to be realistic here. But David, you were so close in this game number two. But that doesn't count in magic. I know the feeling, you know, uh, I've been I've been very close many, many, many times. Anyway, uh, thank you, Reindeer, and thank you, David, uh, for sharing your match here on Timmy Talks and, of course, playing in the Raging Bull series. Uh, now, if you like what you see, let me know in the comments below. And uh, also, if you want to support the channel, leave a like, subscribe to the to Timmy Talks, all that helps the channel grow. Something else that you can do is you can become a sponsor on Patreon. You actually see the address here in the video. So you can go to patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and you can check out how you can support the channel financially. So how you can help me keeping the channel afloat and keep you uh, entertained, you know, with old school magic content. So if you uh, have something to spare, please consider becoming a patron via the Patreon page. Um, talking about that, we're now going to go to the end scroll where we're going to have a look at the famous and fantastic. Am I saying famous? They're not famous. I want to say the fantastic, the wunderbar, the amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Oh yeah. And before we go, next week, Tuesday, we have uh, more matches and then we're actually going to dive um dive into the quarterfinals of the raging bull series so this was the last match uh, that we're going to show you of the group stages so next week tuesday tune back in on timmy talks because then we're going to go to the quarterfinals of the raging bull series see you then Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.